Hello, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are taking a look at A-Frame, a virtual reality framework built on top of the 3JS open source JavaScript library, originally created and sponsored by the Mozilla Foundation, and uh, now it's an independent open source application. And essentially what it is, is an attempt to bring VR to the browser and in a very, very accessible way. And for the most part, they have succeeded. Now, this is a dream that I've had pretty much since I first read Neuromancer or Snow Crash back as a kid, or when I watched the first and only Good Matrix movie. The whole idea of this interconnected world in your browser has been appealing for a very long time. And they've tried it. They have tried it. And they have failed brutally, but they have tried it. Back ages ago, we had VRML and then VRML2 and a few other attempts to basically create the 3D web browser. But what's changed since then is the proliferation of virtual reality headsets. And that is kind of the game changer in all this. Now, VR didn't take off gangbusters like I think they thought it was going to, but it's still a nascent technology. Give it some time. Time, VR is going to become more ubiquitous, more common, more affordable, and this kind of stuff is going to be the future, potentially. So first, let's actually jump right in and look at an example. Now, what they've done is they basically extended HTML. So you're using an HTML style markup, but behind the scenes, it is still a um, JavaScript-powered game engine that's that's working back there. And 3JS is an excellent engine. I think I've done some material on them in the past. Search through my channel, you'll find some stuff there. Uh, but here is an example. Let me just get rid of that one right away. And here is a very simple, this is their hello world example. And as you can see, you basically mark up your world by composing it of various different entities that they've defined. And then entities in turn can have components attached and opponents are attached just like attributes are in, um, an HTML5 DOM. So you see here, you've got the radius, the color, etc. We'll see a, a much more example. I kind of spoiled it there, but with adding fog to the scene. Fog is a component that can be attached to scene objects. So here's your very, very simple scene. And we'll go ahead and run this in the browser. You can see it's made up of an A scene attribute or uh, entity, and then it's got a box, a cylinder, a cylinder, a plane, and a sky that compose that particular scene. And each one of those things in turn has properties such as a color, or a radius, rotation, etc. And we'll run that in the browser. And you see, there you go. Now, where the magic comes in, and I'm demonstrating this on a 2D screen, so you can't really experience it like fully as you should. Uh, but you see down here, there's this VR button. You click that, you'll toggle into VR mode. I'm not in the VR headset in this way. I can't demonstrate it in uh, the browser. But if you have one of the supported headsets, you could actually go to this web page, switch it into VR mode, and interact this in 3D. And you will get full head tracking control. This will be a 3D world for you. Um, and it works pretty seamlessly. It's pretty cool. And in terms of headsets that are supported, it's pretty much all of them. Uh, the Vive, the Rift, Daydream VR, Gear VR, and Desktop are all supported. So pretty much uh, you can run things in the browser. You can run it with all of the most common headsets. And you'll see down here for some of these examples, there are hand tracking controls as well. Now let's head on back over to our example that we've got running. And I'll show you one of the other really cool things they've done here is there's an inspector built in. If I hit Control, Alt, and I to any um, A-frame powered scene, it brings you into this basically scene explorer. So we can see the various different entities that make up our world. So you see our scene, and in turn, it contains the box, the cylinder, the sphere, the plane, a sky um, component, etc., a camera, and then two entities of that do something, who knows what. Oh, there are lights. So you see here, and it's taking that traditional component, entity component system thing and running with it again. So you've got your base level entity here, but it's got a light component attached to it, like so, and then there's various different attributes. Or we could add new components to it and flip through all the various different components that are available. So for example, if we were on um, a daydream, we could add a daydream controller support to this entity. And then you see that right there, um, that's really all that was needed to add support for a different controller or a joystick. And we could have added, um, you know, the various different support, the various different um, controller options out there are added that easily. Um, and then, yeah, this is essentially how things work. Now, the cool thing is we come on back here, we look at the documentation. Uh, we can see, you know, you're built in your core API. And if you're, you know, if you're a game developer, you're looking at creating something advanced with this, you're going to be ultimately programming down at the game engine level, the 3JS level below it. This is more of a uh, prototyping framework on top of it, or a composition framework built on top of it. So for creating these kind of scenes, uh, these kind of hierarchies. So you can see the various different components that are available here. Uh, we've got things like uh, cameras, collada models, uh, um, OBJ models, uh, JLTF mo uh, GLTF models, keyboard shortcuts, um, 
look controls, raycasters, screenshots, etc. So a lot of things you'd want to work with. And then you've got the various different primitives available right here. These are your you know top level HTML constructs like these things here. So you've got cones, boxes, lights, uh, links, OBJ model, sky, sound, toruses, uh, video, uh, etc. And then on top of that, we had, um, like I said, sometimes you'll have components. And you see here, like for the fog component, which I saw earlier, can only be applied to certain this fog component only applies to an a scene element and then we'll go back and add that back in so i'm gonna click there so we've attached a fog component to that scene element and now we go ahead and run it and you'll see there is now this grayish fog and i could come back in again to the inspector i could grab my scene and you'll see now that there's a fog component attached to it and i could play around with the fog so let's have a blood red fog going on instead like so and immediately have the results come out. So it's very straightforward, a very clean design. It's a cool way to get into um, 3D development. And like I said, it runs in pretty much every device out there. So if you want to create um, 3D web VR capable web pages, this is probably the simplest mechanism out there right now. And we'll go back to some of the demos here. And there's actually some kind of more impressive uh, demos that you know show it off a little bit better. So you got um, uh, an anime-inspired UI for selecting different things, so you could use you know with your different controllers. Uh, we've got the snow globe, one of the more impressive ones, which unfortunately has music attached. So we can see a full-on 3D world, like so. And once again, I can bring up the inspector, and we can see all of the various different entities that go together to create this world for us. And it really does come across. It is just like creating a simple HTML5 web page, but instead using 3D primitives or 3D models that you've exported from, you know, Blender, Maya, Max, whatever, with GLTF um, kind of becoming a new standard. Hopefully, you'll be able to bring in just about any kind of tool you want. And then on top, you've got kind of some more advanced examples here that are actually using the full-on controllers. Unfortunately, I don't have the full-on controllers, but you could paint here. Um, if you had a controller hooked up. Or we can see, um, let me just go to, I don't know, whatever Saturday night it is. So you can see kind of more game-like examples that work with actual controllers. And I'll shut that down before the volume gets too loud. And that's what all I'm gonna cover today. It's, it's a cool framework. Um, it's one of those things that really kind of rewards experimentation. It, you know, it's well documented. You can see all the documentation is here. All the various different, you know, building blocks you're working with, all the primitives, etc., and all the components are here. They are well documented. They all have full examples. So there's not really a lot of reason for me to go in a lot more depth here because this is the kind of thing that you should be able to pick up in about, you know, an afternoon. Now, when you start getting into more advanced stuff, like actually building a game and a game logic and jumping into 3JS under the scenes, yeah, it's going to get more complicated. But, uh, you know what? A-Frame kind of nailed one out of the park on this one. So if you've got a VR headset and you want to create, you know, some simple 3D environments for it to play around with that you can host in a web browser, etc., do check out A-Frame. It is a cool project, uh, completely open source, completely free, uh, and works seemingly in pretty much every modern VR headset. So uh, if you've got that VR headset and you're looking for something to do, do check out A-Frame. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click that like button. And we cover all kinds of game development and VR development stuff here on this channel. If that sounds good to you, please do hit that subscribe button and hopefully you'll find stuff here to love. Um, I'll also take a look, see if I can find any of that 3JS stuff. It might have just been on Game From Scratch and text version. I'm not sure, but if I've done some videos, I will make a point of linking them down below. So if you want to learn more about 3JS, which is an excellent 3D lower level graphics framework. Um, it, it's definitely one I recommend checking out, a very cool thing. And if I haven't done a video on it in a while, I probably will actually. So um, if I don't have a video to link down below, look forward to me making one in the nearest future because 3JS is a cool framework that more people should use. All right, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed that. See you later. Goodbye.